Hi guys! If you're a treat maker or baker that's stuck on pricing your sweet treats, I'm going to help you figure out a clear-cut plan on what to charge without blindly guessing and assuming numbers. It's okay, we've all been there. Today I wanted to make an honest video showing how I price these common treats you may sell for a baby shower or a typical order, outlining the process start to finish from where to shop to doing all the calculations plus more tips to help your small business be successful while addressing the big question, why do you need to charge so much for your treats? To answer that question briefly, not only is it essential to cover the cost of your materials, you need to get paid for your time and cover overhead expenses to make a profit. If you're a beginner that needs a more detailed resource written directly in front of you, soon I'm going to be posting a mini pricing guide ebook on my Etsy shop that I will link in the description box down below. So if you want to get learning, feel free to take some notes and let's create something magical! Price hunting and finding deals are the key to cutting costs while maximizing your profit. So I'm going to show you all the stores I went to and everything I got. For large orders, I suggest shopping in bulk at wholesale clubs. First at BJ's or a box of 60 Rice Krispie Treats for $13.49 and this jumbo pack of 156 Oreos for $10.99. When thinning out chocolate for your treats, coconut oil is the cheapest option that works wonders at only $8.69 for this large container compared to Paramount Crystals. You don't get nearly as much for your money. My cake pops and the buttercream recipe that I used for my cupcakes include butter. A pack of 12 sticks was $14.99 and lately I know those eggs are pricey but I found $6.99 for two dozen which isn't too bad. $12.99 for four 16 ounce cartons of egg whites and $3.92 for one gallon of milk. Then the last of my baking essentials was a four pound bag of powdered sugar for $4.99. The only item I couldn't find here in the store was cake mix. I'm not too sure why that is, but we'll check out another store for that. When purchasing chocolate, it's important to consider whether a local cake shop or an online wholesaler works best for your needs. I dip most of my treats in Merkin's compound wafers. Think about if you need a smaller amount like 5 to 10 pounds or 20 pounds and up. I purchased 5 pound bags from my local cake shop for $24.99. The largest size sold here is 10 pounds for $47.99. Stick to shopping smart and only buy the amount that you need so they don't sit around and are less likely to be affected by sunlight or temperature changes. The larger quantities can be purchased online. As you can see, Stover's website sells their 10 pound bags for $29. However, you need to add on shipping plus $12.99 to deliver with the cold pack in warmer weather. My other go-to store is Walmart, which has the strawberry cake mix that I need for gender reveal cake pops at $1 per box. If you've seen my cake pop tutorial on my channel, I only use Pillsbury brand for a smooth, firm dough. I also like to shop at Target. A barrel of Utz pretzels costs $6.99. Another little tip is to always check the labels to be sure you're getting a deal before you buy, just like here. These are mini Rice Krispie treats not regular size. Michael's Craft Store is a frequent stop of mine and they often offer coupons. I got two pounds of satinized fondant for $15 for my decorations and Sweet Tooth Fairy are usually on sale. I use this brand mostly for piping and drizzling. As for coloring your chocolate, the Color Mill oil-based candy coloring can be found on this baking supply warehouse baked deco. When achieving the pastel and neutral shades for a baby shower, you don't need as much product. I have the 20 milliliter size, however, it's even more economical to purchase the larger 200 milliliter bottles. Once you've purchased all the materials needed to produce your goods, you may be wondering how to determine what you're going to charge to make a profit. The first example are these chocolate covered pretzel rods. We're starting with a simple example first to help you understand the concept. 
The easiest way to keep track is to make a little chart of your total cost and the cost per dozen. The total cost is the amount spent on each item at the store, in other words, the full size packages. This case, an example would be a barrel of pretzel rods. Let's go ahead and do that for these three basic items. $6.99 for a barrel of pretzels, $24.99 for five pounds of merkins, and $8.69 for the tub of coconut oil. Then record all the info on that side of the chart. Next, it's super important to break down the amounts by making the necessary conversions. Think pounds, ounces, cups, and tablespoons to help you figure out the cost per dozen. For any ingredients that don't require a conversion like the pretzels, all you would do is some quick math by checking the label for the servings. There are 24 servings here. Multiply that by the serving size of 3 for a total of 72 pretzels. Then you'll want to find the cost per pretzel. Divide the total cost of $6.99 by the number of 72 pretzels, which comes out to 9 cents per pretzel. The cost per dozen here is super easy. Just multiply the nine cents by 12, since there's 12 in one dozen, for $1.08 as the cost per dozen. However, with chocolate, the conversions are more involved. The dipping method I use to cut down on as much waste as possible is to roll the pretzels into a pool of chocolate on parchment paper. This only takes four ounces of melting wafers to dip the entire dozen. That means we need to convert from pounds to ounces. The total cost of the five pound bag was $24.99. Divide that by the number of pounds to get the cost per pound at $4.99 per pound. From there, we need to find the cost per ounce. There are 16 ounces in one pound, so divide the cost per pound by 16 for 31 cents per ounce. If you need to refresh your memory with any conversions, feel free to refer to Google as a resource. Remember that I used 4 ounces of chocolate wafers total for the entire dozen, so after converting to ounces, multiply the 31 cents by 4 ounces, that would be $1.24 per dozen. We can't forget that the coconut oil is the thinning agent to achieve that smooth, fluid consistency. For every four ounces of wafers, I mixed in half a tablespoon to thin it out, and the total cost I spent for the tub is $8.69. So how will we do the conversions for this? Just take a look at the label. The servings are in tablespoons, and there's 112 servings. 869 over 112 servings equals 8 cents per tablespoon. That being said, if there's only half a tablespoon in the chocolate, finish by cutting the price per tablespoon in half, 8 cents over 2 for 4 cents as the price per dozen. These calculations are for the basic materials alone. What makes custom treats so expensive are the labor and decorations, all the bells and whistles like fondant, drizzling chocolate, food coloring, luster dust, which can be tricky to figure out, so I'm going to help you with that. I filled in the total cost for each decorating item used. For drizzling, my favorite is Sweet Tooth Fairy, and I don't add any thinning agent to the drizzle consistency. The total cost for a 12 ounce bag cost $2.99 and I drizzled with two ounces in the piping bag. That means measurements don't require a conversion because they're already in ounces. Just find the cost per ounce by dividing $2.99 by the 12 ounce bag equaling 24 cents per ounce. Take that 24 cents and multiply by the two ounces used to drizzle for the cost per dozen at 48 cents. The task of pricing coloring seems like how would you even do that, but it really comes down to how many drops are in the bottle and how much fondant or chocolate it took to mold the decorations. You literally need to test it out to be on point. I counted exactly 130 drops in this bottle of Chef Master Gel. Then to calculate what it works out to per drop, the bottle was $5.49 on Amazon. Divide that by 130 drops to equal 4 cents per drop. Knowing the cost per drop simplifies everything from there. Be sure to weigh out your fondant. To create an entire dozen of mini bears, I needed half an ounce of satin ice and one drop of the gel. That off the bat, we can fill in four cents as the cost per dozen. Next, for the fondant, we measured the amount in ounces on the scale, so we have to convert that two pound tub to ounces. 
Think back to earlier, a quick pop quiz question for you is how many ounces are in one pound? There's 16 ounces in one pound, right? So double that for the two pound tub of fondant, giving you 32 ounces. Then to find the cost per ounce, divide the cost of the tub by 32 ounces to equal 46 cents per ounce. When you're working with tiny pieces of fondant like this, all you need to do is weigh the molded bear on the scale. That came out to 0 0.05 ounces and multiply by 12 for the amount of fondant used for the entire dozen. 0.6 ounces is a little more than half an ounce of fondant. Last, determine the cost per dozen by multiplying 0.6 ounces by the cost per ounce to equal 28 cents. Guys, I know that was a lot to take in, but you would follow the same concept for the color mill. Know how many drops are in the bottle, how many drops were used to achieve the color, and of course, how much chocolate. Most of the totals are calculated for what was spent and how much product was actually used to make the goods. However, before finalizing the profit, labor and overhead are important factors that need to be included. Overhead or any additional expenses like utilities, equipment, travel, and gas or time spent at the store. Everyone's estimates vary, and labor is your hourly rate of how much you pay yourself based on experience level, ability, and how long it takes you to make the treats. I set my hourly rate for these pretzels at $15 since they were on the easier level of the spectrum compared to a more time consuming or detailed treat such as cake pops. Then the meat and potatoes of this whole thing are the equations. Start by adding straight down from both columns of the chart. The first number we'll be working with is the total that you got in the cost per dozen column. The profit equation is to ensure that you make money. This example is for 25% profit. Take that total number from the cost per dozen column, mine was $26.58, and divide that by the 12 pretzels. This number, 221, is the price just to cover the cost of each pretzel before making any money off of it. Then divide that by three. The second amount of 73 cents needs to be added in to mark up the cost to cover the overhead and profit. Next, for the gross profit margin formula, plug in all the numbers to check yourself. The revenue is the same value as the markup cost. Revenue minus cost of goods over revenue times 100. The percentage can be adjusted according to the profit margin that you're going for, but mine is 25%. And last, multiply the markup by 12 as the final price that I'm charging for my pretzels at $35 per dozen. I believe that sounds about fair for pretzels. Use your judgment to strike a balance as to what profit margin works for you. You may notice in this example, I didn't include the parchment paper or piping bags in the pricing. It's not necessary because these materials were able to be reused and recycled. But for cake pops, it was necessary. I will show you how to do that and why. An example that's more involved are the cake pops. For the bear shaped cake pops, I charged $43 per dozen and the round pops were $61 per dozen. That being said, you'll want to know how many servings does your recipe make. Although mine makes 18 cake pops for one recipe, we want to calculate the cost per dozen. So for each ingredient, I would divide the total cost by the number of servings that it makes, 18, then multiply it by 12. The easiest ingredient to show you is the cake mix, $1 for the box, divide that by 18 servings in the recipe, then multiply by 12. Follow that as the final step after completing the total cost conversions for each of the ingredients as I demonstrated earlier in the chart. For reference, my recipe has one box of cake mix, two eggs, four tablespoons of butter, a half a cup of milk, and three quarters a cup of water. Note that two of my charts varied in price, one of the reasons being that the pink gender reveal pops were the perfect pink color on their own with just the strawberry mix. The blue gender reveal pops required a sky blue gel coloring and whitener to achieve the color. And instead of strawberry, the base was a yellow cake mix that was $1.99 since they didn't have it at Walmart. So all those changes were factored into the pricing of the blue pops. 
Before I mention that it's necessary to include additional tools like parchment paper when they can't be reused, just like when you grease and flour a cake pan, this protocol is done to prevent sticking during baking. I show you how to calculate that with this brand I usually get from BJ's since it's a better deal, although I didn't have it on hand for the video. Start by cutting a rectangle to line the bottom of the pan. My pan is 8 by 12, so I measured with my ruler 12 inches across and cut straight down. Then cut that in half, and you have two sheets that fit perfectly without wasting any excess paper. I know this because the roll is 15 inches wide, leaving enough room to cover the 8 inch width of the pan. Not only is it helpful to know the width of the roll, also how many feet of paper are on there. Most brands I've seen are already in feet, but mine is in yards, so I'm gonna go ahead and convert the 20 yards to feet. That's 60 feet of parchment paper for the roll. Finish finding the total number of uses you can get out of the roll. Divide the 60 foot roll by one foot length of each sheet to get 60 uses of parchment paper. Remember we cut the sheet in half to fit each pan and got two sheets from it. Multiply 60 uses by two sheets to get 120 uses of parchment paper. To find the cost per pan, the roll was 361 over 120 uses, putting the parchment paper equal to only 3 cents per pan. Also measure the amount of flour and butter to coat the pan as well. I measured out 1 tablespoon of flour and approximately a half a tablespoon of butter. You can calculate those in by completing the proper conversions. We're all set to pour the batter in the pan, and it's almost time to bake the cake. Another idea of what may be included in your overhead is the gas used in your oven during baking time. That's all part of utilities and personal expenses will be different for everyone. Decide if you need to include that in your overhead or not. If you've seen my cake pop tutorial on my channel, you know that I immediately sweat the cake upon removing it from the oven to lock in the moisture, which means additional supplies like aluminum foil and plastic wrap are part of the sweating process. I calculate those very similar to the method that I did for the parchment. And guys, if you're looking for a smooth dough recipe that rolls like a dream, feel free to check out my secret to perfect cake pop tutorial if you haven't already to see all the tips and tricks to achieving your best cake pops from the recipe to rolling technique and everything in between. Here I have the blue cake pop dough all ready to go in the mixer. Another side note is that I don't use any frosting in my dough recipe which is usually added during the mixing step to knead the dough. So frosting is an item that you won't see on my pricing chart. It all comes together super well without having to worry about the cake being too greasy and falling off the stick. Another factor that varied the price of the pops, besides the coloring, are that certain designs are a breeze while others are more advanced and require more time and labor. The traditional hand rolled circles took me more time, especially with the more advanced gold splatter design, hence why I charge an extra half hour for labor at $22.50. The other bear design was super simple and much faster to get done. I charged my hourly wage of 15 for labor on those. I'll be sure to link this bear mold down below. Not sure about you guys, it always takes me longer to achieve the perfect round shape for cake pop circles. Comment below if you can relate. Now I have a section of dough here, it's a smooth play dough like consistency. Just press the mold in face down and peel away the edges, then press to smooth everything out and pop it out of the mold with the plunger. As long as your dough is smooth and not cracky, it takes way less time to create these compared to hand rolling. It's time to get dipping. I combined some white and milk chocolate melts along with color mill in the shade latte and Chef Master candy color in orange to achieve this cute caramel color for the bears. And my favorite sticks are the clear acrylic. They are a bit more pricey compared to white lollipop sticks, but you can't beat how clean and elegant they are, especially without that yellow appearance on the stick. Mine were $11.94 for a 100 count on Amazon. 
To give you an idea, it took a total of 12 ounces of Merkins to dip one dozen, which is about one ounce per pop. I will put the charts on the screen if you would like to practice calculations like a little math problem and check the numbers with my pricing. What makes this design so simple is that all the bears were dipped in the same color of wafers in contrast to the other design had multiple colors going on and the decorating details for these were also quite basic. I cut out some circles of fondant for the muzzle and just piped on some chocolate designs, no intricate molding or anything. Once I cut the circles, I made an indentation with my cookie scribe for extra detail and piped a triangle shape with chocolate for the nose. Hopefully me explaining this to a fellow treat maker puts into perspective why I priced the Bear Pops for less money. I finished them off by securing the fondant in place with a dot of chocolate and piped two small dots with black chocolate for his beady eyes. Once you have the system down, these can get done pretty fast. One last trick I wanted to show you is how to get a clean bottom for your upside down cake pops. This has nothing to do with pricing, but just wanted to share. I dip my cake pops upright and dry them in a cake pop stand or floral foam. After decorating them, I pipe a small dot of chocolate with my piping bag on a sheet of parchment paper and center the pop directly over it, holding in place for a few seconds until the chocolate sets. It's so much better this way without a large pool of chocolate on the bottom and definitely more professional for your presentation. Pretty packaging is always more expensive. These mini gold cake pop boards from My Little Cake Pop are sure to make your treats stand out. I didn't include these on the pricing chart since it is an optional accessory that not everyone will have. On the screen here, I'll put the breakdown for how I arrived at $43 per dozen. I wanted to explain why I charged $13 more for the next batch of cake pops because that's a significant difference. As you can see, they are hand rolled, which always takes me more time to perfect the round shape and uniform size. I usually work out the cracks by squishing and forming the dough into a patty before creating a ball, which I explain step by step in my cake pop tutorial. If only it was as easy and magical as this looks. Then the cake pops were dipped into several different colors, the baby blue, baby pink, and nude to match the beautiful pastel nude color scheme. It doesn't look like much, but it's a lot more time consuming to mix the colors and heat them up individually. Before you start investing in all these materials to make your products, practicing and mastering your skills is key, much like an artist. You don't want to be struggling with an order, having to remake anything, and lose money on the supplies. Standing behind your products will help build a steady client base and your customers will be happy to pay the price for your artwork. One of the materials that cost the most money was the gold luster dust at $1 per gram. For the edible paint, I mixed a total of 4 grams with 8 grams of Everclear, a 2 to 1 ratio. Right there in this little cup, that's $4 of product. The 2 to 1 ratio achieves that splatter consistency to flick on the cake pops with my brush. Faster, shorter strokes create something similar to a sponge painted look. And for the larger dot effect that's more spread out, I pressed with more pressure and ran through the brush like I was plucking a string on a guitar. The fondant bear decorations on top of the pops add on more labor, as well as the little chocolate baby bottles I applied to the side. I molded those in the same shades of pink and blue color milk. Now you really know how all these details add up. Each bear was attached to the pop by piping a band of chocolate to secure against the stick. I just hold that in place for a few seconds until set before letting go. For the final results, the pricing breakdown for these cake pops came to $61 per dozen. I will show those equations on the screen here. A trendy item seen all over Instagram are these gorgeous decorative cupcake boxes with all the pipe designs. I price this $61 and I recommend any beginner starting out to sell these. The buttercream recipe is absolutely the best I've ever tried from Bake My Day Nemo. I love all her content. 
One of the ingredients that makes this frosting more pricey is the 10 sticks of butter. However, the quality and taste are all worth it. A tip is just to buy the butter in bulk. I purchased the value pack at BJ's. One batch of buttercream iced about 18 cupcakes for me. I didn't want to make this video any longer than it already is, so in my next tutorial I will show in depth all the piping tips I use to create each of these cupcake designs. Aside from frosting, the decorating supplies are the bulk of why the cupcakes cost this much money. The gold bead dragees alone were $2.10 per cupcake. I scaled out approximately a 2.5 gram spoonful of dragees that is sprinkled on top. The cupcakes were a yellow cake mix, same instructions as the back of the box except I substituted the water from milk to give it a richer flavor. Being that the labor is less involved than dipping chocolate treats, yet it's a great seller to make money, I recommend any beginner baker or treat maker starting their business to offer it on their menu. The design with this old baby fondant sweet stamp and luster dust cost $4 more. After pressing the sweet stamp into the fondant, I cut around it with a 2 inch scalp circle cutter that would fit on the cupcake and painted the embossed letters with a gold edible paint. It's best to paint with a very fine thin brush to keep it neat, as it is it was tough for me to stay inside those lines. Pricing these cupcakes was a scenario where I adjusted my profit margin. I initially calculated at 25%, however the price was unusually higher than the average ballpark for decorative cupcakes. Do your research to observe and compare the average rates from other treat makers. If your price is way off, that's an indicator that you either need to cut costs or adjust your profit margins accordingly. I adjusted mine to 20% profit margin to reach $61 per dozen. Over time, you will fine tune this skill more naturally and confidently with experience. My chocolate covered Oreos were priced at $46 per dozen. Just like the pretzels, this is another easier, straightforward pricing example with similar materials, except for the Oreos of course. I transformed them into some fun gender reveal Oreos by splitting the cookie in half and placed a dollop of either pink or blue chocolate onto the center, then sandwiched that together. For events like baby showers, I prefer to mold the Oreos for the cleanest possible look. I used a total of 24 ounces of melting wafers and 3 tablespoons of coconut oil. The downside is that the molds do contain a lot of chocolate, which means more color mill as well, so that all needs to be figured into the pricing. To prevent the Oreos from popping up, it helps to fill the mold about halfway. Push the Oreo in just until some chocolate spills over the edges of the cookie and finish pouring until the top is completely covered. Having that fluid pourable consistency from the help of the coconut oil will make the method no fail for you. I refrigerate them for about 20 minutes to give the chocolate a chance to completely set and carefully remove from the mold by releasing the seal. On to decorating materials, the mini fondant bears were the same size that were on the pretzel rods, except instead of drizzling, the melting wafers were used to mold some balloon decorations in assorted colors. The design is a cute little teddy bear holding a balloon. I piped the string on by sticking on the balloon first and connected with the thin line of sweet tooth fairy to look like a string. Being that the level of difficulty was simple, I set my labor cost at $15 for the hour and here is the final breakdown of $46 per dozen for these teddy bear Oreos at a 25% profit margin. Last but not least are the teddy bear rice crispy treats at $65 per dozen. It's always a great idea to check and discuss with your customer what look they prefer. The silicone soap mold method used about 3.5 ounces of Merkins for each cavity, which is $13 right there. Or if they want something more affordable, the traditional dipped look that's more bumpy requires less chocolate. It's all up to the aesthetic that the customer wants and you always want to be on the same page about the expectations of the product that they're receiving. My go-to techniques for flawless, clean, and beautiful Rice Krispie treats are in my last tutorial. Personally for me, the labor is a piece of cake while still looking their best. 
Another question you guys had from the tutorial was regarding cleaning the molds to prevent the chocolate from being dull. I shine them with clear vodka just enough to dampen a paper towel to remove excess lint that clings to the silicone. Since this is a standard procedure I frequently use to clean my molds, the vodka is part of the cleaning supplies category which would be considered overhead and not an ingredient. Before adding decorations, labor, and overhead, the cost per dozen came out to $17.52. After popping these in the fridge for 20 minutes, peel to remove from the mold to reveal sharp edges and a smooth canvas for your custom decorations. A no-fail way to insert the sticks is to poke through the top with the cookie scribe and slide the stick right through. This way you don't have to worry about cracking the chocolate or anything. And we're all set to decorate. The teddy bears are made out of fondant and the balloons are molded out of chocolate. I calculated the fondant with the food coloring by weighing the same exact way as I did earlier in the video. The cost of the decorating supplies was E37 for the whole dozen. Finish it off with a cluster of chocolate balloons and fondant bow tie for a simple but adorable design. The piping chocolate for the strings was a sweet tooth fairy. Just like the cupcakes, I had a design with the old baby fondant circle painted with gold edible paint. This design cost about $3 more per dozen. With labor at $15 an hour, the price of the Teddy Bear Red Krispy Treats with the balloons came to $65 per dozen. I hope you guys enjoyed learning all this material about how to price your sweet treats and why they cost so much. Like this video if it's helpful for you and your small business. There's so much more that goes into this than everyone thinks and you all deserve to be recognized for your artwork without selling yourself short. To stay on top of your treat game, be on the lookout for my mini pricing guide ebook. I wish you the sweetest success. It's Christina here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.